Yaakov Shaharabani is the CEO of a company called Adasky. It makes thermal cameras, which is going to turn out to be very important for the automotive industry. And I think you're going to find this very interesting. Yaakov, I first saw you at CES earlier this year. It was very interesting to hear what you're doing with Adasky. But just for those who are unfamiliar with it, explain some of the advantages of thermal cameras. Hello, John. Thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's a great honor. And especially it's second time, meaning that uh, it was a good meeting <laughs> back then, prior to the COVID-19, you know, era. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. And um, having said that, I must say that since then, although uh, all the challenges that uh, the global challenges that everyone is facing with the uh, COVID-19 here in our uh, beautiful company, uh, things is progressing very well. A uh, lot of... Uh, progress and achievements in the last uh, few months, then I would be more than happy to share with you some of those. Well, explain this. I mean, we, we all know that cars have cameras on them, yeah. you know, e even if it's just for backing up. And yeah. now we've got forward looking cameras as, as well. What's the advantage of having thermal cameras? What, what do they see that the other sensors or the other cameras do not see? You know, first, let, when we are talking about thermal cameras, we are now in the midst of a, of a revolution with the thermal cameras. And humbly, I would say I'm very proud that our team is leading this kind of revolution. It's like the daytime camera, that uh, the revolution that we were facing in the last three decades with the daytime cameras, you know, improving significantly the performance, uh, si very small size of uh, daytime cameras, and at the very same time, very costly and very cheap cameras. Now we are heading for the same revolution with the thermal cameras. This is the camera, by the way. And, and some of you, or the audience, you know, people that were in the military or are familiar with thermal cameras, usually the, the size of the cameras, I would say a decade ago, was huge. And we were able to, uh, to make that such a miniature, and it would be even smaller than this. It's the size of a finger. And uh, Nidis is automotive grade. That's what we're doing from day one here in Other Sky. And understanding the, the very tough challenge that the, uh, the, um, uh, of the systems that are supporting the driver to improve safety, um, they are being challenged currently with the CMOS camera, especially at nighttime and in harsh weather. Now, luckily, and that's what we were preaching for the last four years, uh, luckily, uh, AAA, just uh, a few months ago, just released a very thorough um, uh, report where basically they did their um, analysis in the US and what they found out that the current other system reduced number of uh, fatalities in, uh, in uh, car accidents, but in daytime. At nighttime, the numbers are growing in the last decade. And we think that with our technology, with our sensor, the Viper, we can reduce significantly the number of casualties at nighttime. By the way, most of the pedestrians' uh, casualties happens at night. And the, the numbers are thousands. I mean, it's incredible. And the technology is here. And it is cost effective. And it should be implemented in the advanced uh, other systems in cars. Yeah, and, Yaakov, uh, what, you're, what you're pointing out there is, is especially important because, as you know, so many vehicles these days are being equipped with uh, automated emergency braking with pedestrian detection. And in fact, uh, that technology is being mandated mandated in the US, I think as of next year. And, and soon everything's going, every new vehicle is going to be equipped with this automated emergency braking. But what you're saying is your camera will allow it to be just as effective at night as it is in the daytime. John, it's, you know, AAA, I'm going back to that report. They did a test with four different uh, 2019 car models, the very advanced one of four different car makers. And over 25 miles per hour, they couldn't avoid the emergency braking system didn't function at night. 100% of accidents. That's what they uh, currently have with the uh, current other system. And of course, if you cannot see at night, you cannot uh, initiate the emergency braking system in the relevant distance. And that's what we are offering. 
with this, the thermal camera, the beauty of the thermal camera, that no matter what is the lighting condition, it can be daytime, nighttime, fog, heavy rain, heavy snow, because of its uniqueness of basically um, sensing the heat, the emissivity coming from the environment, it adds additional layer to the uh, um, um, pedestrian and animal detection algorithms, which you cannot find with the uh, daytime cameras, nor the radar system. And that's why we are preaching, and I think this is the right time, that policymakers should make a move towards the next uh, advanced ADA system, advanced emergency braking, and also uh, car makers. And I must say that uh, we have uh, very uh, thorough discussions with several car makers through through this, the, the period of the uh, COVID-19. And there is a progress because it is inevitable that it will be there. It will be implemented. It will be integrated because it will reduce the number of deaths in the US and everywhere. Yeah, Yaakov, this is an industry, as you well know, that tries to get costs down. They'll fight over one cent in cost. Uh, what can you tell them about the cost of your thermal cameras? I will, I'm will. i telling them, listen, if we were 20 years ago and you had to discuss with the leading daytime camera whether to implement that in your other system, and they will come with a very big camera, daytime camera, very expensive, and you will tell them, listen, 10, down, 10 years down the road, what would be the cost of this camera? And, and uh, it's the very same thing with the thermal cameras. The trend is very clear. It, will be, it is already very cost-effective solution, and three, five years down the road, we are talking about a price that would be equivalent to a daytime camera. So I think that this understanding, it takes time to convince, it takes time to, to uh, lay the ground for additional technology uh, in the automotive industry, but it is inevitable. It will be there. And, and the cost is priceless when you save uh, hundreds or even thousands of, of lives every year. Also, in short, by the way, we, we have met several uh, policymakers and, and um, you know, uh, and insurance companies that uh, there are, they, they, there is economic um, um, motivator to do that. And maybe, you know, when, when you calculate the price of the camera, which is cheap, by the way, and uh, take into consideration the number of casualties that you will be able to reduce. So you don't need to charge for the additional liability. And there is uh, additional uh, cost that you can save just because of that. I think that, uh, you know, I, I think that the first brand, by the way, the first car maker that will have an other system with thermal camera integrated, he will be the safer solution globally. And his sales will increase significantly. So, and, and by the way, we are in a very uh, advanced uh, uh, discussions with some of those top OEMs, uh, car makers. And I think that it's, it's, um, it will be there. It's, it's just a matter of time. It's not yeah, let's, get, if, let's go into more detail on that then. Uh, you're talking with uh, several OEMs. Are, you, are they still in the learning stage or are they at a point where soon they'll give you a purchase order? So we, we announced a couple of months ago, through during the, the COVID-19, we announced collaboration with a level four. Uh, we were awarded, and this is a very important milestone to us. And we think that also for that level four uh, brand uh, car manufacturer. Uh, and, uh, but we, we think, we believe that, uh, and we have this discussion, it's not, it's not a valuation discussion, it's about integration, getting into the teethers, getting into the seeds, uh, to the understanding whether we can support mass production. And the beauty of other skies from day one, we are focusing on the automotive market, period. We are not a defense company that just have a branch that is dealing with automotive. And when you are building a company from scratch to meet the automotive industry, 
I think that in, in many ways, you have a significant advantage on other companies that try to adopt to the automotive market, which is completely different business uh, than uh, other vertical markets. Yeah, that, that's a great point. When you mentioned level four, are you referring to an autonomous system? Yes. I, so th th this would be perfect for autonomy. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know, we, we uh, when we are talking about the advanced other system, we're talking about level two. From level two and on, level three, level four, you must have a thermal camera. You cannot detect, classify at nighttime, at very dark, at, in a blurring in a blurring condition, in a um, fog, for example, that's a difficult corner case. Now, the, it might you might with other technologies you might detect that there is something over there. But what is this? Can you classify that? You cannot do that in data with daytime camera. You cannot do that with radar, nor lidar. So we believe that our technology. We must uh, will be there. It, it's uh, and and will support and uh, with uh, will provide a very robust solution to those that are seeking to have level four. Yakov, we've been talking about automated emergency braking now, autonomous systems as well using thermal cameras. Uh, sticking with automotive, what other sort of applications do you see? Yeah. So, by uh, one last comment about sure. yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the automotive market. Um, we are looking also at NCAP and EuroCAP and others, uh, you know, um, five star safety uh, uh, tests, etc. And, and some of those start to do some tests at night, but they are very, very, uh, how shall I say it, you know, um, very mild in their approach. They are, they have a lot of uh, discounts uh, in order to not to face. Uh, uh, blurring, not to face uh, um, a difficult condition. You must have a visibility of one kilometer or something like that. And the technology is there. You know, I, I compared to what we have to a situation where we didn't have, for example, the seat beds or the airbags. If prior to those, the, all the safety uh, tests didn't take into consideration uh, seat belt or airbag, the technology wasn't there. And like seatbelt and like airbag, other Sky Viper is a disruptive technology. And all those tests must, must, be, must meet this technology and those situations that we are facing uh, during while driving the car. And uh, if not, then you will look at AAA report and you will see that the numbers are increasing of casualties. Going back to what you asked, there is other, of course, applications. Uh, we, uh, this is another uh, um, significant uh, progress that we had in the last, uh, since CS, that we went also with our unique technology to the smart cities, um, uh, smart uh, junctions, uh, traffic lights. And, and we believe that because this technology can support 24 seven, no matter what is the lighting condition, it can, uh, provide a very robust solution for those that are seeking to go to to have smart cities and we have some initiatives in different uh, places around the globe uh, there is also in cabin solution you know when you are talking about autonomous driving then you must uh, monitor the people that are in the vehicle uh, it might be that it's very dark in there so you must have something that can sense uh, that kind of uh, situation and and uh, we have some other uh, initiatives, um, but I think that the, the main uh, leap will be uh, having our system part of the advanced uh, ADAS system and support emergency, effective emergency braking. Yeah, Yakov, I think you're right. I, how you described it, uh, a disruptive technology. I, I don't think there's any question that this is coming to ADOS and and to autonomous vehicles as all as well. And I want to thank you for bringing us up to speed with what you're doing at Adasky. Thank you very very much, John. And I'm looking forward to our next uh, meeting. Uh, I don't I don't know in few months. I'm sure that I will have uh, good news to share with you. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, you're you're on. We'll do it again in the future. <laughs> I'm looking for that. Thank you very much. Okay. Stay safe. Bye-bye.
thanks.